back. If you just join us, you're watching the YouTube channel and channel television coming to you live from Lagos. Remember about top stories. Countdown to D Day, as presidential election petitions tribunal is set to deliver judgment tomorrow on Abdul Bukhari's petition challenging President Muhammadu Buhari's victory at the February polls. Former Minister of Petroleum, Bizani Alice Madeke, uses bid to achieve jewelry worth $40 million to run in the FCC and now forfeited to the federal government. Minister of Finance, Zainab Bahman, announces the federal government's plan for a 1.5 billion naira fund 2020 budget. And US President Donald Trump sacks National Security Advisor John Bolton. For more information on our top stories and others, do visit our website, channelstv.com, youtube.com forward slash channels web has videos of all our shows. Now we have some images that you sent in to us and we can share them with you beginning from a video from Balogun showing the road, which our eyewitness describes as the Balogun Jankara Market Road in a deplorable state. Our eyewitness is concerned by the neglect of such an important road connecting several routes on Lagos Island. Our next picture is also from Lagos, but this time from Ulufemi Ogunshala Street at the Ogba Ijai area of the state, showing this flooded street. Our eyewitness blames this on the blockage of the road and also a blockage in the drainage by a resident. Our final image is from Lokoja, the Kogi state capital, showing the debris of a building collapse. Our eyewitness reporter says the collapse happened on a street along the cantonment market and he wants them to do something about it. That's the authorities. Thanks for sending those pictures in. Do send us some more when you can. The federal government is set to borrow 1.7 trillion naira to fund the 2020 budget. And that's according to the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, who is speaking at a meeting on the medium-term expenditure framework. According to Mrs. Ahmed, other sources of funding for the budget will come from the sale of government property, privatization proceeds, and from multilateral Thai loans. The minister also explains that the cost of debt servicing is expected to rise from 2.44 trillion naira in 2019 to about 2.45 trillion by 2020. It's a consultative forum on the 2020 to 2022 medium-term expenditure framework. Heads of financial institutions and members of civil society organizations gather in this hall to brainstorm on how to make the document work for the nation's economic development. The Minister of Finance starts her address by speaking on how the economy has fared in 2019 and some of its constraints. According to her, some of the successes include the attainment of a real gross domestic product increase from 1.8% in the first quarter of 2018 to 2.1% in the first quarter of 2019. There has been significant growth in the non-oil sector. A growth of 2.47% was recorded in the first quarter, a rise from 0.7% compared to the first quarter of 2018. Growth in the sector, however, moderated to 1.6% in the last quarter, in the second quarter of 2019. After reeling out these successes, she then delves into the medium-term expenditure framework, which will span between 2020 and 2022. There will be new borrowings, and the new borrowing for this year will be 1.7 trillion, and this is 100 trillion or 95 billion up from 1.05 trillion in the year 2019. And how well has the 2019 budget fared? The Director General of the Budget Office explains. For the half year, so the half year 2019, we have revenues of about 2 trillion and expenditure of about 3.3 uh, trillion as of uh, that um, you know, date. Uh, but it's not just these numbers in terms of the debt performance. We, we look at like the oil production, as the minister indicated, as of the half year, we averaged 1.86 million barrels per day, which is what, uh, what we call base production. In all, the federal government is hoping that the framework will raise the bar in terms of revenue generation, job creation, and addressing infrastructure needs for the country. 
To discuss the 2020 budget funding plan, I'm now being joined live from Abuja by the lead director of the Center for Justice and the Social Justice and also an expert on budget analysis, Mr. Eze Onyekwere. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. And we're, we're, we're just looking at, we're looking at the fact that now part of the plan is to fund the 2020 budget by borrowing uh, up to about 1.7 trillion naira. Now, considering that borrowing seems to be becoming some sort of a pattern, is this a sustainable way to fund the budget, do you think? Well, I will start by saying that Nigeria is in a fiscal crisis. And this is a very deep crisis like somebody inside the hole. The more you dig in, instead of trying to come out, the more you get into the hole. So we had expected that there should have been very critical, innovative ideas brought into the pre-budget statement, which is the of the current uh, medium term. So we have now a situation where what we are getting is business as usual. We're already owing so much in terms of $81 billion. If you compare it to how much we owed when Obasanjo's government said we must have debt relief, the alarm bells were ringing at $35 billion. Today we have $81 billion, which is more than double, plus some amount of money on top of it. And today we are servicing debts with about 68% uh, of all our retained revenue. And of course, we did make a projection in the last year that we are going to raise about $7 trillion, and we ended up raising about $3.8 trillion. And we had a deviation and a variance of more than 45%. So the expectation was that this MTF or the pre-budget statement was going to be put out in the public for Nigerians with the necessary competencies and capacities to make impulse into it. So that at the end of the day, we have a very, very well nuanced MTF, which will lead us to a very well nuanced budget. Because what we are getting, if we continue this way, we are going to get into serious uh, crisis. Yeah, yes, you talked about the fact that you would have liked to see more critical ideas infused. I mean, for instance, you, you heard the minister talk about the fact that perhaps next year we would see the oil market oversupplied. So definitely we are in need of critical ideas. What kind of idea would you have preferred to see today? Well, we need a lot of convergence between monetary and fiscal policy, trade policy, industrial policy, and labor policy, that all these come together in such a way as to build the Nigerian economy. We need the federal government and the state governments to do more of signaling. Signaling in the sense of showing the private sector and showing Nigerians where they are going to put incentives and where they think that investment should go much more. For instance, instead of all the buildings in Abuja, which have been vacant for more than four or five years, those monies could have been put into the power sector. When you put those monies into the power sector, there will be more jobs, industries and factories will not close, and then we'll begin to think of how to reject the economy. We have $25 billion in remittances from the diaspora. How do we creatively manage for, uh, the, the foreign exchange policy and monetary policy? in such a way that we just simply don't get the Naira value alone, that we begin to get the foreign currency, which will help us rebuild the economy and infuse that needed foreign capital that we'll use to get our economy to the next level. So there are tons and tons of ideas. In terms of even if we had to take the hard decisions, like stopping the subsidy on petroleum and fuel. So there are all kinds of things that could be done, but you have to throw it out for every Nigerian to, you know, have an impute. The ideas are gone when somebody will sit down and just create the impression that you simply bring a document for consultation. It was not in the public domain. And you just put up some slides on the day of the consultation and expect people to react. And you are telling them that you are more or less finalizing it. That's not the way to go. I think Nigerians should be given an opportunity for the next couple of weeks to properly debate this thing, this document, and make their impulse before it is finalized. Yeah, but then looking at, the, looking at a day like this where, you know, the modalities for the medium-term expenditure framework, we're looking at from 2020 to 2022. Um, yes, you've talked, you seem to be unhappy about it. Um, what is the first thing you think you should see on that plan that is doable and feasible? Well, first of all, we should make realistic revenue forecasts so that we don't build castles in the air. When we make those realistic revenue forecasts, then we agree that we have a challenge, and then we begin to talk of how to rejig, how to improve on those challenges. For instance, the issue of revenue leakages, the issue of tax collection, this comes up critically at every point we are doing a revenue forecast. Then Nigerians of all hues, both the professionals, 
both those who are in the technology sectors, we come together to say, this is how we want to plug the leaks. And when we agree to plug the leaks, we go away from politics because as I was even on ch in channels television this evening, listening before the news came up, I saw a fire rest glamorizing what they were doing, how they have raised the highest amount of money over time. You watch EFCC talk about how many billions it has recovered. But at the end of the day, when you're implementing the budget, there is no money to implement the budget. So you begin to see that all these stories don't, like, don't add up. So we need to come down from our respective high horses, tell ourselves the truth, invite every Nigerian to come on board, beg Nigerians to make sacrifices, and then introduce some level of confidence building in the economy so that foreign investors and local investors can come in. So that people wouldn't be afraid or wouldn't be intimidated whether they will lose their money if they actually bring it into the Nigerian economy. So that's the kind of things I want to see going forward. All right. Lead director at the Center for Social Justice and an expert on budget analysis, Mr. Eze Nyekwere. Thanks a lot for sharing that with us on the News at 10 tonight. And when the News at 10 returns, U.S. President Donald Trump sacks National Security Advisor John Bolton. That's on the international scene with Around the World in 5. Do join us again.